May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Guk Audio podcast. I'm D.C. Puba of Guk Audio and Guk Archives, preserving the legacy of Shunryu Suzuki and those whose paths crossed his and anything else that comes to mind. So this is anything else that comes to mind, life in Bali. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. Um, well, What's on my mind right now? I'm sorry, no gas, no time for gas. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I haven't missed having a, a Zen guest in almost a year. If I haven't had a Zen guest uh, live, I've done a podcast about someone a couple of times. Um, so, I don't know, I'm a little exhausted with the work, I'm telling you what's happening. Okay, here's what's happening. Uh, uh, you know, I'm working on uh, getting the audiobook ready for Cricket Cucumber, working with the files. Uh, I created the audio files, reading the whole book here uh, into podcasts. Um, and uh, working on an up, it's an updated version of the book and uh, with uh, quite a number of small changes. Uh, you know, I think most people wouldn't notice most things. There's a couple of things that are, that are, uh, might notice, but uh, I notice them and I, I want to get it in good shape. So I'm, I'm working on the, the text too. I'm working with Bill Redican on that, who uh, did the uh, initial uh, uh, Shunyu Suzuki verbatim uh, lecture transcript uh, set, uh, and you know uh, saw to it that the uh, audio tapes were uh, archived, and uh, I was. Uh, Consulting with Bill, involved with Bill on that, uh, involved with raising money for it and different things. And and um, uh, he helped with Crooked Cucumber back then, and he's helping with it again now, and he's very, very good at details. Um, and um, so there's that, and just the regular stuff, you know, the, the blog posts and uh, responding to emails and uh, keeping up, get a lot of requests for stuff. Uh, and um, but uh, then on top of that, um, I had a uh, you know a contribution from uh, a future guest so that we could build a guest room because you know I've commandeered this. So boy, is that coming along? And uh, we're on Thursday of the second week. Uh, and um, uh, wow, are they working fast and are they working well and are they a pleasure to be with? I've known the contractor Cardino since we first came because he worked for our prior landlord. What a nice guy. They're, they're all family. There's God. I think there's Cardino and four people. Yeah, four people working with him. One of them is his grandson. His son, I got, I got some work at a nearby colonial house, because Chris, he's got two swimming pools. He decided, you know, it, it's too expensive. He didn't have any guests, and they never really needed two pools. Uh, so he's creating a garden out of one of them. So <laughs> he he rented a jackhammer and had his staff trying to jackhammer it, holding the bobby. He wanted to build a, a, a drain for the, some drain sumps for the, uh, for it, and uh, you know, his staff wasn't 
they weren't qualified to work the jackhammer. It was cruel. So I brought somebody over there, Cardino's son, and uh, uh, they talked. We talked about um, what to do. And so uh, Ferry, that's his name, I ended up digging these big holes uh, with the jackhammer and, and with some guys and uh, putting them down pretty deep. The water table's right there, you know. Uh, it's a pretty big pool. Uh, I mean, especially for a villa. It's a nice, I loved it. I loved swimming laps in it. I swim in the other one now. It's a saltwater pool. It's a little smaller, but it works. It works. You know, when I don't feel like going to the ocean, uh, it's just a couple of minutes away. I go over there. Uh, so anyway, so it, it, this pool is way in the back of his place, and they are wheelbarrowing in really thousands of trips of uh, of um, small stones and gravel uh, to, you know, to raise it um, a few feet, maybe a yard, uh, and uh, maybe more. It's an enormous amount. I mean, these guys are just going at it all day long, dumping uh, this... Uh, Gravel in there. It's more than gravel. It's it's heavier stones. They call it coral here, but it's not coral. Uh, anyway, on top of that, he's going to put black sand, like mountain sand. Uh, and uh, then on top of that, dirt, he's going to plant a, a yard in there. So it's a crazy trip. And then Ingrid, who's the manager, she meekly says, uh, well, maybe we should tell so-and-so. He said, no, don't worry about that. And I figured out that's the owner of the place. <laughs> but he's got a long-term lease. And, you know, they could cart it all out and put the, you know, redo the surface of the pool. Wow. Anyway, uh, it's a serious job. It's amazing to me that, you know, he's been here 40 years or something like that. And he asked me for people. I mean, that's not all. Gardener, that, uh, tree help, because he knows he's met my son, Kelly, who's an arborist. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, there's a tree they're worried about leaning over on them uh, from a, a neighbor's lot. And um, so Ingrid took a bunch of pictures of it, and I sent them to Kelly. You know, just WhatsApping. She WhatsApped it to me and I to him. And he thought it was in pretty good shape. And, uh, you know, um, looked pretty good. But uh, the, so she went and, t but, you know, you never know what's going to happen with the tree. It didn't look like any of the branches were going to fall. And it wasn't hanging way over it. You can, uh, so I checked with Bolly Bill about it. Yeah. Uh, but first, I'm going to tell you what, what Ing Ingrid talked to the head of the Bonjar, the neighborhood group. And uh, he said, well, the guy who uh, owns the land is a Brahmin, so he won't talk to him. And he said that guy didn't want him to talk to him. <laughs> and it's a big lot. It's like a big jungle out there in the middle of this very, very large block we live on. I mean, it's like the size of a number of blocks in a, like a U.S. city. Uh, and um, so um, I called up Bolly Bill and, and his wife's uh, royalty. So I thought, well, maybe, you know, and, <laughs> and Westerners, we don't really care much about all that. And, uh, but he said, look, it doesn't matter what, what cast he is. If it's anything overhanging, you can cut. And if it's not overhanging, you got to get their permission to cut it. Uh, and um, and so he's had things like that. And he said, they're not going to pay for it. Don't even bother to try. Uh, <laughs> that happened to John Tarrant. Where I was living with him. We had a tree that was seriously hanging over the barn. A couple of lawyers next door absolutely would not pay to do any work on it. So John just paid to have it made where it wasn't dangerous. That really disappointed me in them. They were not thoughtful. Uh, they were treating us 
like people in court that you just wanted to see how much you could take advantage of them. Anyway, it all worked out, and John was cool. He, he didn't let it bother him. So, um, all right, so that's happening over there, and uh, there's always little things happening over there. I, I take his dog treats and body comps, and uh, his dog is a little tiny dog. He calls Rut. He goes up and dances around Body and sniffs Body. Body sort of growls, but you know, it's all right. Uh, they're getting to know each other, and uh, so all right. So uh, there's this job going on here, and uh, you know we had to move out of our bedroom and everything out of there. And Cardino stayed there for the first few days, and that was neat. And, He's so nice, and those other guys are so nice. It's no drama. Just concentrate on the work. It's very simple, straightforward. They're, they're good examples for Zen students. Zen students are, are aiming to work like them, you know, without thinking of other things, without... <laughs> without maybe... And, you know, it's certainly not like... a a lot of American uh, 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 job sites I've been around where guides are wide cracking constantly and making, oh man, I mean, I have heard the most sort of offensive stuff about women going on constantly, even around people you wouldn't think. Uh, and uh, our sexual innuendos and sexual comments and... and uh, uh, God, and and there can be a uh, certain amount of drugs and alcohol and their emotions. There can be anger. There can be fights. Whatever, nothing, none of that, none. They're they're working. They're, they're like a finely oiled team, you know. But they're oiled with just not having big personalities and not laying their trips on other people. They just work together harmoniously. Really, very, very nice to be around. Just so low in drama, so cool. Uh, but um, I will say that uh, it's not that simple. Like, when, when I took... Now, I was telling somebody this recently. I don't think it was on a podcast. I, if I'm repeating myself... Uh, I hope not. Uh, my, a very, very uh, excellent psychic who I knew for many years, Fred Kimball. You can read about I have, I have a four-part series on him on Cuke.com. Just write Fred Kimball, K-I-M-B-A-L-L, -L, K-I-M-B-A-L-L -L in the site search box. Anyway, he was at Green Gulch. I set him up doing a workshop there. A whole bunch of people came, like 50 people participated in it. Uh, and um, uh, so he stayed at Green Gulch. And Fred was, he was raised on a farm, very poor. He was from, he was from a very, you know, what you'd say, low-class American uh, hickey, or well, he wasn't really hickey. He was just not from our sort of... Uh, uh, he, he wasn't from a, a highly educated group. He certainly got educated, and he certainly knew a lot. Uh, but, you know, he was a wrestler and a boxer and a merchant marine. But he was a very powerful psychic and a really wonderful guy. Pretty selfless, too. He was a sort of spiritual teacher. Anyway, he was at Green Gulch. So he'd met some people, were, and we were walking down in the fields, and he was watching people, and, he's, and, he, and he said... Uh, uh, these people are all on a good spiritual trip in this community here. I said, "Yeah." He said, "Yeah, they're 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 working on themselves. They're they're th th this is good. This is good." I said, "How do you know? What do you do? You see uh, something in their aura or what?" He said, "Well, they're all disturbed. <laughs> they're not accepting that." The, the worldview they were taught. They're not accepting the, the, all the assumptions they grew up with, all the ideas about what existence is and who they are. So they're disturbed and they're, 
you know, trying to work it out. So that's the other side of uh, of it. But still, uh, it it is nice to be around people that, you know, in America, it's like I've worked a lot with Hispanics. You know, <laughs> I've hired them to work, but I've had to work with them. And they're, they're like that. They just want to do the work. They're happy to be working. And they just do the work. If I'd pick up a, a a person more like from my background, they wouldn't be a good worker, and they'd be just wanting to be con me or get out of it or something. <laughs> more like me. Um, anyway, um, it's a pleasure having them. Uh, but Cardino and I have had to learn to communicate a little better because uh, you know he'd say, "Well, how much, how much can you do this for?" And he said, and he said, oh, first he said, uh, for 15 million, which is like, you know, uh, $1,100. I said, this is a whole room upstairs above that, you know, you can't. He said, no, we can do that. I, and then finally, when I get some money for it, we talk. And he says, oh, well, the 15 million is just for materials. <laughs> I said, how much for labor? He said, another 15 million. I said, well, how long is it going to take? He said, we can do it in six weeks. Um, so now we're talking $2,100 about that. So then I start giving my boy right away. Trucks are bringing stuff in piles of sand and cinder block. This is, it's being built out of cinder block with rebar. And then um, uh, camphor, a, a type of uh, tropical wood, camphor uh, uh, windows and doors. Uh, that's fine with me, man. I want to tell you, we've got, we're going to have to get the place all treated for termites. Termites uh, thrive around here. Uh, so anyway, so we're talking later, and he says, uh, uh, I, I need another five million. I said, whoa, 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 wait, I thought I'd given you everything for materials. And so we talked a little bit, and he said, well, you know, I don't want to lose money uh, on it. <laughs> I said, well, I don't know what to expect. And uh, how many times are you going to ask for this? I didn't get a good answer. So the next day, he showed up, and I said, hey, let, let's go over it all. And then he brought out this book, and he had absolute meticulous bookkeeping and receipts. Showed me every cent where it had gone, and showed me he's also had taken money out to pay the workers. And you know what they're getting? They're getting that was uh, for the first week's work. That was uh, uh, three point five million, three times eight twenty. Uh, you know, like. Uh, $250. He gave himself $70 for the week's work. Uh, and, um, uh, but then we understand, and it, well, you know, so I got Fami, our architect, but, but, uh, on the phone, and he talked. Fami's from Java, and he's, Fami knows, Fami knows Zen Center. You know, I know him because of ties back there. And we all talk. So if I'm, he speaks good English. And I have, a little, I have to speak Indonesian with Cardino, and he's a little hard to understand. So we come we come to an agreement, $40 million. He'll, he'll do the whole thing for $40 million, materials and everything. So that's great. Uh, but um, anyway, I was just, it, while he was talking to Fami, I could hear him using the word kachewa, which means disappointed. And I realized that he said I'm disappointed in him, and he was he was sad about that. I mean, can you imagine? Is he so nice? <laughs> uh, and I said, "Hey, man, I'm not." And Fami told him, "No, he's happy with you. You know, he just wanted more clarity." And that's what I told him. I said, "I just didn't know what was happening. We have to communicate." You know, we we had had a meeting with uh, Cardino and. Fami and the landlord and me and our plumber electrician and everything. And um, uh, Fami talked to him a, a couple hours, you know, and I, I'd, I'd listen and Fami would explain stuff I didn't understand. 
and uh, sort of came to agreements on a lot of the details and everything. And um, so at some point, just so we have something to remember it about, uh, I get out a piece of uh, uh, paper, you know, from the, the photocopy machine and printer. And Fami just draws a little picture there, you know, the windows here, and you know, blah, and makes it. He just wrote the word <laughs> kacha here, that means glass, <laughs> and the word kai, kayu here, that means wood. And there was just the simplest thing he did. And I made a copy of it on the photocopy machine. And that's it, that's our entire plan. And contract? No, there's no contract. There's just uh, uh, verbal agreements. And as you can see, they're bendable. They're they're uh, agreement karat 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 is rubber. <laughs> they have rubber tire rubber, and um, um, if it go you know if it goes over, I'll, I'll pay because uh, we trust Cardino and and um, oh God, he's done so much for us. I usually give him a little more than he asks for. You know, I mean it's. Uh, but you know he did our he did our hot tub when Katrinka was in America and it was way more expensive than he said it would be but it was a really good deal and uh, but it was because he didn't include the cost of an on demand heater or the uh, or the 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 hardware for it you know the shower head and then there's the tub there's like these different settings I mean that was uh, that costs like it does in America. Uh, but it was a good job, done really well, and we were very happy with it. We got uh, two bathrooms fixed up in it. Um, it was really good. But uh, anyway, you look, even if you did have a contract here, it wouldn't mean anything. Nobody has to follow it, especially working with a foreigner. Now, maybe they do with each other, or maybe some foreigners uh, know how to uh, operate on that level, know how to do that. But um uh, we don't need that. And also our landlord, uh, you know, in, in the contract for the house, uh, he said, well, you know, I don't really pay much attention to contracts. It's just whatever we agree on. You know, it's just trusting each other. And that's the way it's been. We don't abide by the contract. We pay for everything. All sorts of stuff it says he should pay for, we pay for why? Because we've got ridiculously low rent, and he extends it without raising the rent. And uh, having a good relationship with your landlord is extremely important here. I've already said that, but boy, is it true. Anyway, wonderful working with Fami. Uh, after that, we've just had some phone conversations. I've got him on the phone with Cardino and worked out a few things. And wonderful working with Cardino and those guys. And I'm working. I'm sitting here working all the time, and the, the noise they make doesn't bother me at all. I love it. I love it. Like I said the other day, uh, I'm just sorry there's no heavy equipment. Katrinka, however, is living with Alice and comes back. We have a date on the weekends, and that is cool. That is fun. He is totally trustworthy. We will leave, leave him and his family at home and go out. Don't worry, you know, we give them keys to the house. That's not true with everybody. Boy, I want to tell you, you've got to know who you're dealing with. Oh, oh is that not true? Um, anyway, it's uh, a lot of different decisions are made. I, today I asked him, I said, hey, you built this little wall here in front of the terrace in front. Would you tear it out? And because you can put it on top of our neighbor's wall, and then that we will gain about, you know, it's like, six inches in this little terrace in front where people sit. And he went, all right, bang. They just took it all apart. It was all submitted and everything. And, you know, an hour later I came and it's all redone. Really not, it's really a nice, it's nice working with him and being here. And, uh, and I have to be very regular. I get up early and, and I, uh, I put, you know, fresh hot water in their thermos and we got a water filter for them so that they have uh, filtered water. We don't have to buy them water. Uh, and uh, we provide them with coffee and sugar. Oh, my God, they use a lot of sugar. Horrors. Uh, it's just that's all they want It's coffee and sugar and water. Uh, and, um, you know, it's just nice. That's all. 
anyway, I got to run. That's enough. Just wanted to tell you that's what's happening. Oh, hell. I forgot the other thing that's happening. We're, um, we, we keep getting reports about what's happening with getting vaccination. And uh, what's happening here is Sinovac, the Chinese vaccine, which is like, you know, 50% effective. It's turned out in some tests higher. But the thing is, like, like the Johnson & Johnson, which is like 76% or something, if you get it, nobody's getting really super sick or going to hospitals or dying or anything. So it's the, the, the number one thing is just getting knocked out of commission uh, won't happen with it. So, uh, and the rule is, uh, and you know, uh, remember I had I had uh, Ryan for three different uh, visits on uh, Life in Bali, Doctor Raya, her and the CDC. Everybody says take the first one you can get; they're all good. Well, they're, you know, it's it's good enough. Uh, they they were hesitant to say it's okay until they'd really looked into it, and then they said it was okay here, her and her clinic. And, um, oh, here, and I can tell you this. So anyway, so, uh, so we get different rumors and, 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 you know, it's first the healthcare workers here are getting it. And next they want the people who work with tourists. They got to open up for tourists. So they're getting younger people with tourists and they're getting older people too, over 60, over 60 here is old. Uh, so the local people over 60 and the people who work in the healthcare and the people who work with tourists, they're all, they're all have been getting them. And then the, the, the foreigners, Boule, Boule is like foreigners, right? The, the Boule with uh, Kitap, which is like a permanent residence visa. Uh, they, they've been eligible for a little while, but not us. We have Kita, Kitap. We have Kitas. And he touched his temporary residence visa. Uh, and so um, we were just about, to, it was going to be Kitas, we're going to be able to do it any day, and you can register online. And then, But then they made a green zone out of Sanur, where we live. They created three green zones. It's very interesting, Sanur. I think Sanur they see as the up-and-coming place. Because, you know, you hear me call it Sleepy Sanur, and it's just, not it's not like Kuta or Seminyak or over there. It's it's you know our beach is never even a very height of tourist season is never overcrowded or anything. It's nice, uh, and oh, there sure were a lot of Indonesians there on Sunday. Good Lord, uh, but they use the beach differently. But you know they're always a pleasure to be around. Uh, uh, anyway, so uh, th they made. Ubud, the, the famous art center of uh, uh, Bali, Sanur, and Nusa Dua, which is a, a sort of ritzy place over a little beyond Kuta and Seminyak. You've got to look to at a map to see what that means. Uh, uh, Nusa Dua and Seminyak and Kuta and Legia and all that, that's on the other side of the southern peninsula. We're on this side of the southern peninsula. We're on the 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 east the east side uh, they're on the Java west side of it and um, anyway so they decided to make all three of us a green zone and guess what that meant they want everybody to be vaccinated here so here everybody in Sanur free vaccinations and <laughs> and catch this it's mandatory. Uh, have I heard anybody complain? No. Are there people out marching and protesting? No. Uh, you know, if somebody doesn't want it, the thing is there's not a lot of... Uh, <laughs> I, I wonder if somebody doesn't get it, if anybody would notice. Is there any? Uh, is there going to be any follow-up? I mean, it's sort of like there's not a lot of uh, um, police or anything but the Department of Immigration is is the one to watch out for so if immigration is tracking it for the foreigners then then that would be something to be serious with but anyway everybody's getting it everybody wants to get it uh, we just don't have the 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 circus that's going on that we read about in America um, 
So, uh, <laughs> I love that mandatory. <laughs> Just thinking about it, if they did that in America. <laughs> uh, so, um, so then, you know, meanwhile, we're talking about, you know, there's more information and there there's some sites that tell you a lot for foreigners on it, COVID-19 on Facebook. And then, uh, uh, you know, and, and our landlord is, is a very key person in our lives because we have a wonderful relationship and that's extremely important for living here. Uh, and, um, and we have extremely low rent and, uh, this is not duplicable in this area. I mean, people get hold of us wanting to find a home here or something. They get, they get one room places, uh, for what this costs. Uh, so, uh, you know, our landlord's son has a neat little place, Wakoka, around the corner. His name's Wayan, and he has two brothers, Komang and Kadek. See, Wakoka. And his little tiny coffee shop, and they have a little food and this and that. And he just built it, like, last year. Put it together out of... It's part of his home. And uh, so then I'm talking to him, Wayan. Uh, firstborn is what that means. And, uh, and I said, your father... You got to help your father. He doesn't know how to do the internet or anything. He's got to register. You know, it's, this is before, and this is like a week ago before all this thing came down. You can just go and bring your card that shows you're a resident here, and you can get it. And he said, "Well, I don't know. I can't really make him." You know, I said, "Yes, you can." And then Katut shows up, our landlord. I, I say, "Hey," he says, you, "He can't make you. What are you offering? Any resistance?" And he goes, well, I, uh, uh, and Wayan says, well, he's not sure he wants, not sure he wants it. No, he has to have it. So I could too, you have to have it. I said, uh, it's, it's, and, and I, he's well, I, I can't force him. I said, yes, force him. He has to have it. He's very important to you, to me, to his grandson who he takes care of, to all of us. So, all right. So then <laughs> they, they really sort of like, can you imagine doing this in Japan? <laughs> God, <laughs> and uh, but anyway, he got it. He got it yesterday. He got the first shot yesterday, uh, and we're all happy and we're joking about it. And then, um, so then, all, all of a sudden, there's there's word that we can get it, you know, and that all we have to do is sh show up with the a certain type of number that shows our residency. Well. Oh, we don't know where ours is and ours. Oh, we haven't updated it or anything. Not, nobody uses those. So um, I talked to Kadu, the landlord, and he says, yeah, I got that for you a few years ago, you know? And he said, I paid for it, you know? And I said, well, uh, what do we do? He said, well, let's go downtown. I'll take you downtown on this motor scooter, you know, which I don't like to ride on. So I went, uh, and then I got a bright idea. Call our agent, my agent. He's a problem solver. He's he's Mr. Know Everything, does everything. I call him up. He says, yeah, look, don't need to go downtown. Just go to the local neighborhood place, the Bonchar, and just get a letter saying you live here, and I'll go downtown and take care of it all and give you that number you need to get the vaccination. So I call Katut up and says, that's what he said. So Katut comes over, and he says, well, I think we need to go downtown. I said, look, Mighty said, no, you just need to go now. I said, all right, let me call Mighty. You talk to him. He said, Katut talks to him. He goes, it's a little hard to understand uh, for me. He thinks I understand more than I do. So then he comes back on afterwards, and Mighty said, look, yeah, you, you just go to the bond jar. you got to pay. It'll be about 500000 each, about $35 each. And... Uh, and, you know, because you need updated ones, and uh, and they give me the letter. And, I, oh, he said, oh, never mind. I'll take care of the whole thing. Just tell him forget about it. And went, well, what do we do? He says, I'll do it tomorrow. I said, well, where do we meet you? You don't have to meet me. I'll just do it. <laughs> so I think maybe that means, like, day after tomorrow, we'll be able to get our shots. So it's, uh, we're really looking forward to it. You know what I think of? It's all these movies where, like, it's the last day for a police officer, and, you know, they get killed in the movie on their last day. So, and today, and we have been around people so much, just really a lot. I mean, I'm a, the house is just full of of workers. And even even when there's not construction, there'll be somebody coming in with uh, with. Uh, 
uh, with the uh, coconuts to give us coconut water and give us the coconut meat and then the jamu, which is like a refreshing health drink, very traditional, made out of uh, kunya. Kunya is uh, 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 kunya is um, turmeric, and uh, 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 God, I can only think of the Indonesian words, uh, ginger and things like that, and a uh, type of galangal, and uh, we drink it every day, but we used to make it, we get it delivered now, and, uh, you know, the guy reading the water meter, and, oh yeah, our, our, our housekeeper, she's here three days a week, and Nyoman, a driver, and also like an assistant, come in, bring stuff, I call him up, Nyoman, can you get so and so, you know, uh, or Mudik, come in because there's a plumbing problem, or, I don't know, or, you know, uh, Yvonne coming, a neighbor, to talk to Katrinka. Oh, people bringing food. We get food delivered and stuff, and they're coming and going all the time. And now we got these five guys, and our neighbor, Yvonne, she's like, just, anybody that comes to her place, she sprays with alcohol. Before they come in, she sprays where their footsteps go. You know, she's very, if she goes into a taxi, she sprays it all before she goes in, right? And she's, I'm talking to her today. She says, are all your workers there? Are they wearing masks? I said, no, I don't make them wear masks. They're all family. I said, if we're next to each other, we'll wear masks. We'll put masks on. She went, oh. But anyway, and then Katrinka's in Ubu today at a Bali International Women's Associated meeting. And, you know, she rode in a car there with women. Uh, so we've lived sort of dangerously. You know, before she came back in the summer, I did not live dangerously. I was extreme. And then, uh, because I like, I like being a hermit and working a lot and going to the ocean and swimming and I could see people at a distance and, but when I, when she came back, that all changed. It was still fairly careful, but mm, not really. So, uh, it'll be a great relief when we get our shots. Uh, and, um, but let's hope we don't have one of those movie uh, scenarios happen where we go, oh, oh, in our dying breaths, we go, oh, we, we should have been more careful. I love you, darling. Goodbye. Meet you on the other side. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Anyway. Oh, golly. All right. So that's life in Bali. That's what it's like living in Bali. Uh, just working around the clock and all this stuff. And um, uh, I got, you know, I get to the beach. I'm only getting there about once a week now. And I get over to Chris's to swim about another one day. I'm not doing, I'm not, I, I need to be, I, I get up and walk around, do a little yoga and stuff, but I need to do more but I get, I get really wrapped up in what I'm doing and I just want to get through with this certain, with this uh, audiobook project and all that because there's other things that are evolving too. There's notes on Crooked Cucumber, which is coming out of all this work to have an, a, a companion book. And there's Tassara Stories, which I read once a week. And I love and I'm grateful for all the people helping. And uh, I thank you, our dear sponsor, uh, for uh, helping us, our dear listeners. Uh, and uh, remember, if you want to keep us going here, all you have to do is go to uh, cuke.com, C-U-K-E.com. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a donate button there. Hit that, and it'll explain the whole thing. Okay, thank you very much for uh, being here uh, and accompanying me in this lonely journey through the cosmos. So until next time, this is DC Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives coming to you from Sleepy Senor with Doggett Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear lovely Katrinka. The only one of which is here is Bondi. But we're all here in spirit. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening. <laughs>